Is this gonna be the last Gone Racing film? Is Gone Racing down? Who's, who's listening to this, Sam? Sam, how you been, man? How's your dog? <laughs> The Lifetime Grand Prix is a series of races, three of which are gravel and three are mountain bike. It's pretty simple actually. It's, there's 30 riders in each, in the men and in the women. And if you get first place, you get 30 points. And if you get second, you get 29, etc. Yeah, they're like the biggest gravel off-road races in America. Going for the title, there's like 250K on the line. Electric toothbrush. Like my uh, New Year's resolution right here. Moral hygiene. So in 2019, I was like totally, totally lost. Like I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't know where I fit in. I didn't know what the future looked like. I kind of assumed I was done after that. Get a little smoke in here. Simulate that. Kansas dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not a healthy sport. Like the biggest revelation of the year was like we, you know, we started the alternative calendar. I was like, this, this is interesting. It's different. It's cool. Um, and more than anything, like I enjoy it. Who said? Feel like crap today, though. Ooh. I'm already swinging. <laughs> I don't know. I did a big week last week. It's been like, yeah, I was watching an old diesel truck try and get up the hill. <laughs> Ever since, it's like every morning, I'm like, come on, a bunch of black smoke coming out the back. It's like, whew. We talked a big game about you know getting out there and learning about the sport and introducing the sport to people, and uh, that's all true. But at the end of the day, like, I like to race my bike and like, I want to go fast. So like, let's, let's get out there and f some dudes up. <laughs> Road racing in America has faded in a lot of ways. Like the, the big stage races, you know, like Colorado, California, Utah, um, they were all hurting pretty bad. And then the pandemic happened um, and now those are, like gone, but it left this like huge void. And it was like, well, what are we putting there? Gravel, gravel raised its hand and was like, hey, uh, we're, we're cool, we're fun, we're different, we're inclusive, um, you can do it all over the place. And it all sounded great on paper. And then we all started racing and it turned out to be hard as f <laughs> so, so here we are, can you beat that up? That is kind of hard, man. <laughs> Let's see, she's a little fired up. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Keystone, Colorado, Summit County. Um, at my training camp. <laughs> I haven't really had any structured training for 18 months, maybe two years. Um, and in the last like 10 days, um, I don't know, flip switched and I just feel like I need to get out there and do some real training. If you want to win one of these things, you got to train hard. <laughs> like over the last two years, because I've been doing so many different things, it's been hard to structure any training around any goal. I know I can get away with not having results now, but I want them 
for myself. <laughs> There's still like a little bit of that in me. My position in life definitely sets me apart from most of my competitors um, because I, yeah, I am a mother and I'm in my 30s and I feel like, you know, I've gone through a career that I was very passionate about and continued on into this. I remember my first lesson, like, very distinctly and I remember loving it and remember getting my pieces and like running home. And like the first thing I would do is just go straight to the piano and learn it. Cause I was so excited just to hear what it sounded like. And then like all my siblings took lessons. It was just a thing my parents did. So then my siblings would get pieces that I really liked. So then I'd go get their pieces and I'd learn their pieces and then they'd get mad. So I would just memorize it. <laughs> and they'd be like, what? No. What have you done on the past for training this morning? I uh, just long and steady. Yeah, I did a workout yesterday, so I'm just gonna beat the heat and get some hours in. You know, when it was time to move into something different, I did, and I found joy in something else. And someday I'll be done racing, and I'm excited just knowing that after music I found the bike, I'm excited to see, okay, well, what am I gonna find next? Can't go wrong with a honey bun for Recky. Mm -hmm. Oh, chocolate chip coke. Mm -hmm. Oh, and chocolate milk. Yeah. Not much. Just playing out here. Sounds like playing. Yeah, pretty much different thing. Okay. See you later. Are you gonna hit the button or me? Uh, you. All right. Bye. Love you. Love you too. I'm super excited for tomorrow. Um, I've been doing a lot of mountain bike racing this last, I mean, for the last two months um, and feeling great on my mountain bike. So I'm excited to get out there and, and just kind of like kick the series off and see what it's about. When EF and TIBCO came together for the women's program, we had this like weird thing, the alternative program going on, right? But Emily was like, yeah, I'll do that. She brings a good good element to the squad because you know Lachlan's over there doing his weird Lachlan stuff and 
I'm over there rambling, and then Emily's just like this normal, nice person. Good morning, Seattle! Emily's like so much fun to have around. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it my first because my, that the first was, yeah, it was, I didn't, I did it just to get on a mountain bike and it was like a six hour race and I decided I was gonna do half of it because I had to get home and pick, pick up my daughter from school. This is technically the first one, yes. Sick. Chocolate milk. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the secret for mountain bike racing. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. I did make a bit of a mistake in lining up and ended up at the back, which was definitely not a deal, especially in a mountain bike race, which I knew they started out fast, but it started out really fast. Sea Otter was my first mountain bike event, and um, yeah, I was extremely nervous going into it. When I left the house, when James brought me to the airport, I was crying because <laughs> I didn't want to go. and really quite terrified. I think I had ridden my mountain bike four times. And then we went straight into a sand pit. And so like moving up was so difficult. I still entered the single track 15 to 20th. So not a good spot at all. In mountain biking, you can kind of like see the riding on the wall. They just keep inching out like five seconds here, 10 seconds there, five seconds here, and then eventually you're just like, man, I need to take a gel, I need some gummy worms, and we're not getting any closer. Yeah, the thing that separates like good mountain bike racers from like fake mountain bike racers like me is like, I can always follow. But like when I get out ahead, then it's like I get I get found out. I realize I'm a fraud. All right, folks, let's put it together right now. On to the home tree. This is the man of the hour, Keegan Swenson, taking out a huge, huge victory, 255-20 feet. It really hooks me. Like I understood why people love mountain biking. Okay, I get it. You know, I know I know why people go out there on their mountain bike and spend all this time in the woods or on the trails, because it's awesome. Around it out with a five, ten place finish. Lachlan Martin coming home with an eleven place spot on. I feel my old man bones getting out of bed. You know, and April's still getting out of bed for me right now. Like, you know, I'll take it. for Unbound because I knew that I was in really good shape and that I could, you know, if everything went well, I could definitely get a good result. I mean, it's nothing compared to some of the stuff we rode on. It looks worse in the car. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's all small. It's and not it looks like... like steeper in the car too, right? Yeah. Just send it. <laughs> We kind of screwed up, to be honest. You know, like, you start planning for Unbound like three weeks ahead of time, and you're like, wow, we, we're really dumb. <laughs> Alex, can you rent an RV and just like drive out there? It's like, yeah, sh sure. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. <laughs> As 
So how long's it been? Three years. Three years since we've been here. Take two? Is it two years maybe? 2019. Is it three years, Alex? Like the amount of different people who came up who said they were trying it for the first time because they'd seen the EF video, you were like, that's the whole proof of concept right there, you know? Like that's validation a bit. I never know what to do with all these cords, so. If I were to like go out and win the Grand Prix this year, they're not gonna like sit around the dinner table at a big European race and be like, damn, Hal's won the Grand Prix. He's going good. It's its first year. This episode of Bill Hunting is brought to you by Pretty Great Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> coffee on the move. It's the coffee that actually tastes good. <laughs> Real fans! How are you all feeling this morning? Most of the athletes racing these events, like we don't know where it's going. You know, maybe in 20 years, someone would like people look back and they'd be like, yeah, was, that first year of the Grand Prix, that was pretty badass, you know? I mean, those guys didn't know what the hell they were doing. Uh, and it was kind of hokey, but it was cool they were doing it because look, look what it is now. Yeah, Unbound was frustrating. It's just kind of the race never happened for me. <laughs> It all just unraveled and just... <laughs> I still don't, I'm still unsure of how the crash happened. Gravel fans, are we ready? The 200 miles starting five, four, three, two, one! I'll fast forward a little bit. Lachlan crashed. It busts his junction box and like, what that means is he had one gear and it wasn't a good one. It was fine, like it was moving in a good spot and then we kind of got lined out. Okay. Next minute was on the ground at like pretty high speed. And then to then just like lie down, like, and step off, you're like, oh, damn it, you know? You're like, there's not another unbound next weekend. I don't know, we lied to each other for about four and a half minutes and I was just like, dude. <laughs> and I, like, honestly, I would have given him my bike in a heartbeat, but like, it's against the rules. Like, you can't do that. Just get some uh, food and water. Okay. And we were flying along the gravel, like, so fast. And I think it was around mile 18, a couple guys went down right in front of me, and there was just nowhere I could go, and I just catapulted on top of them. People were flatting everywhere. Like, you would just see people pulling off, pulling off left and right. And then I think around mile 25, I noticed that my front wheel was just spraying sealant everywhere, all over my bike. I felt awful, like I was sick. Like I had a fever the night before, like in the race, I'm like, what are you doing, man? And the legs just kept going. I'm like, all right, whatever. I took eight tests. They were all negative, right? Seven before the race, fast forward, I'm back here at home. Take the damn test, me, two lines. It was so fun. Like, I had so much fun. There was, like, that mud section was so crazy. Emily Newsom. So tomorrow we are on stage three of the Grand Prix series and it'll be Crusher and the Tusher. So um, 10,000 feet of climbing in 60, I think it's eight or nine miles. So it'll be hard. For the series right now, I'm in fourth place, but I'm pretty close to third. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to close that gap more and set myself up to hopefully get on the podium 
I mean, obviously I'd love to win it all. I just need to hone my mountain bike skills a little bit <laughs> and then it's possible. We are in Wilford, Utah. Milford. Milford. M. <laughs> We're in Milford, Utah I'm with an M. Uh, just outside of Beaver, Utah. And it's the third round of the Lifetime Grand Prix series, the Crusher and the Tusher. Of all the races in the Lifetime series, I'd say Crusher is probably like tailor built for me. Um, it's just two like hour long threshold efforts at altitude um, on a gravel bike. So I left Colorado at the end of January. And then when I got home after Crusher, um, like mid July, I think I'd been home for less than two weeks. I injured myself, like I just um, injured my ribs and my back. And I'm very stubborn when it comes to those things. And um, I was like, ah, fix itself, fix itself. And it just progressively got worse. I was kind of unsure if I could race. And then Alex cracked my back. I'm a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex fixed my back. I flew out here with all the tools. <laughs> Pick him up like a, like a stray cat. I haven't looked at the overall standings just because I'm like, to be honest, it's like irrelevant to the way I'm going to approach the rest of the series. All I can do is try and race the best races I can. If you're in it, you're trying to win it, right? And like, Keegan's doing a pretty good job of winning this thing. <laughs> Let's go, Emily! Just cruising, you know. Don't, don't ask me what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Like, once we started racing hard, it was very difficult. Like, I was just doing very shallow breaths. In the end, the only way I could manage was to just put it in a ridiculously big gear and just <laughs> real slow, so I could just use my muscles and not, not my, like, lungs. I somehow managed to be like in the fight for fifth, <laughs> which like things happened and like I just kind of kept chugging away. The whole thing felt just like a, a train wreck. It's funny that people are like, oh, you know, you're just gonna kind of cruise through the rest of these. It's like, no, like we're only halfway. We still have three to go. So it's like, I just want to have a good run at, you know, one or three of them. I don't see winning the series happening on my end, like, Maybe Emily, she's looking pretty good. She's in fourth right now. She's looking solid. It was really amazing to finally get to the finish, but I don't think I've ever been so happy to finish something <laughs> as I was to finish that. So now I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> I came there, I did the best that I could do with what I had, and I have to be proud of that not letting other p people's opinion or how other people might feel seeing, oh, I came in ninth. She's a world tour rider, you know, she should be better. And I'm sure people don't think that, but it goes through your head, you know? I want to be the best that I can be at it. I really want to win Leadville, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to go in with the mentality of trying to win it um, and see where that gets me. Like watching the tour this whole July, I've watched every stage, got up early and like, I've like thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's the first time 
I've watched it since I was maybe 20 that I felt like I wanted to be there. There's things I haven't achieved in racing that um, I'm not sure if I have the ability to achieve, but I at least want to like find out um, before I fully step out of like competitive cycling, you know? How's he's moving pretty good? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, how's he's like, he's never had a really great race at Leadville, but um, if it comes together for him tomorrow, he'll be sticking around. What's your what's your plan? Follow. Yeah. Follow. Follow. Like if you're with Keegan, I feel like you just gotta be just sick. Just sit on. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, with this race, it's like you have to be good enough to get to power line with the front group with spending the least energy possible, and then hope whoever you're with is shitter than you. <laughs> <laughs> On a good day, I'd be you know, somewhere in the top five, which would be sweet. I mean, the odds of me winning Leadville are pretty low. Um, it just doesn't really fit with my engine. Leadville, um, Leadville was a disappointing one. Rocky. I trained very hard. Got myself ready for Leadville. I was really looking forward to it. I, I was on like a good day. Dude's super spread out. Yeah, I spread it out. And then flatted on our line. I had to like plug it and then gassed it. Took like four or five minutes. But I was like, all right, I'm just gonna race as hard as I can and see how far forward I can go. You know, he had the legs to be, you know, either win it or be, you know, pushing Keegan uh, for sure. So, I mean, he was you know, one of the top two guys um, on the day, I would think. But it was a frustrating one, for sure. Like, the race was kind of done for me at that point. Leadville's never been that nice to me. A flat double check. There's like a wire in the grass. I hooked around my foot. Didn't see it. Can you slap your head? No. I think so. I got ribs moving around. Like total freak accident. Got my foot caught in a wire and just went from like 35 miles an hour to like no miles an hour. Like. I mean, I rolled 
rolled it in to the finish line. I say rolled it in, but I had to like walk backwards up power line. It's not the kind of ride that you want to do when you have like five dislocated ribs. And that, that really sucked. room for all that, remember? I did a cross race, but I lost all the skin on my hands. <laughs> That's the funny thing. It's like last weekend, you were doing a cross race. I was riding my bike for three days. I've still got all my skin. <laughs> you raced for an hour and lost like all the skin on your hands. I don't understand how you can be like a professional athlete. <laughs> Ride your bike all the time, and then you do like one hour cross race, and you're just like, oh yeah, you have no immunity to this. Oh, we got a lot of time till we get that too. Yeah, two hours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I got booby trapped at the West Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> I got 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 bit by a snake in the grass. I was like very hurt, but I didn't know what was wrong, you know. Then you go to the hospital, and they're like, "Yeah, nothing's broken," and you're like, "Okay." And why do things move when I breathe? I just have to like keep reminding myself that if you like go down the list on paper like I'm, this suits me pretty well. Going into Schwamigan, honestly, I didn't pay attention to the standings very much because that doesn't work well for me. I left that race a bit confused and like I called James up and I was like, you know, I'm gonna quit. If, if I'm fighting for 14th place, I'm not doing this anymore because I want to win. It's been like a long year. Um, and I've done like more than I ever have before. And I can definitely feel like the last month, I'm like, okay, I'm getting tired now. The bikes were just demolished. We were demolished. Like we were just like covered head to toe inside and out um, with mud. And so we, we just bounced out of there and like, you know, ruined a Airbnb shower. I know. This is your last race of the season? Yes. I mean, maybe I do some fun stuff in December or something, but yeah, I'm pretty ready to chill out. <laughs> For this to be the last uh, race in an EF kit, um, yeah, it's pretty special. It's a little sad. I've been like with Team EF in various iterations uh, since I was 14, 15. So we're just gonna round and call it 20 years. Other than, yeah, like my parents and my brother, like that's the longest relationship I've had. We started racing together when I was like, 19, I think, or 18. But the thing is, like, for me, I'm just kind of like, I just know he lives, like, 10 miles up the road, and we're probably going to ride together just as much as ever. I'm passionate about women being able to continue a career when they're moms. And it's something, you know, being a mom and also moving into my late 30s sometimes can be disconcerting, you know, and I can let that get to my head and be like, oh, you know, maybe I'm slowing down. I'm gonna hit 40 in like, gosh, a year and a half. It's been a year of discovering what I wanna do and 
coming to terms with what I can't do anymore. I'm kind of aware that like, I'm not gonna do this forever. So I feel like obligated to do as many things as I can, like while I can. I think I've kind of learned that like more of a good thing isn't necessarily better, <laughs> you know? I'm still not entirely sure what I'm doing next year. Um, I'm trying to like get to the bottom of it. Turn around Every now and then I get a little They call it the Lifetime Series because it takes a lifetime Grand Prix over Grand Prix Nice Awesome Yeah Awesome Sweet Sweet Maybe coming up there